Uh, oh, speaking of, uh, yeah, so Joe, help us out here now. I will now accept your, <laughs> your services. Uh, I wonder if there was ever a crack in the starship. Speaking of starship, do you guys remember Whoa. serial number eight? Uh, it you know eight turns sideways is infinity. <laughs> uh, seal number eight was uh did something that has never been done before by firing three Raptor engines. Um, of course, our friends at NASA Space Flight and and Mary Boca Chica Gal was out there at three a.m. or something the other night when this finally happened. I gave up on trying to stream that late. This was. <laughs> I just did not think it was going to happen because they just had so much. I uh, was just like, nah, nah. So finally, um, let's see. That's a, There's a pre-burner test, which is where they just kind of spin up the pre-burner. This is actually what made me think they're not going for static fire because they just did a pre-burner test. They were able to refill it and re-top it off only about an hour, an hour and a half later. Or relative, it was a pretty quick turnaround. Maybe it was two hours or something. But then... Around 3 a.m. or something, again, I don't remember the times. Check this out. The first time three Raptor engines have fired simultaneously. Um, it this is the was, static fire, so it doesn't doesn't leave the It ground. doesn't. Yep, exactly. Just a test. Those are your I love that effects. little shot of yeah. cloud what that, was that comes out the side. It's, they do that every time, and I don't, I don't know specifically why, but maybe 10 minutes. So, yeah, those of you uh, listening... Right before they, uh, right before they launch and commit to launch, there is a small jet of high pressure liquid oxygen, or now gaseous oxygen. But I think it's because they're pressurizing the system, getting ready to fire the engines. You know, that's already kind of bleeding, and all of a sudden it's like, okay, full pressure. They start spinning up, mm -hmm. and you see it like shooting out. There's actually now three of these vents because there's three Raptors. So I think I don't know for sure if there's the same jet that you're seeing off to the right coming at us and off to the other side, or if there's just a single one of those high pressure vents. But before you know it, kaboomy! All three of them lit successfully. Um, okay, can, sorry. Can I just say if if they uh, I, I'm making a lot of assumptions here. If they need a vent like that for every engine. Then when the super heavy goes off oh, with like twenty seven of them, would there just be like this huge like <laughs> dust like twenty seven like jets streaming out the side and then <laughs> I want to see that. You know, I don't know. That's a really good. Qu I mean, that'd be a pretty cool sight. I'm that would saying. be like you know, it's gonna launch and all of a sudden it just goes. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's cr i don't know that's a great question uh but the uh all three lit successfully for a full duration according to elon it was successful um he basically said a day later or the next day that everything looked good um and they're continuing on with the 15 kilometer hop but um a friendly reminder here as it stands each raptor engine is about a little more than twice as powerful as a merlin engine so this was almost as, not quite, but three Raptors is almost as powerful as firing a Falcon 9. Wow. And they're doing that re relatively close to the ground here without like water deluge really or anything. I, I am kind of sur surprised it doesn't just make a huge mess of everything below it or a bigger mess than it does, you know? Yeah. Pretty cool can though. I, can I assume that it's tied down in some way or locked down yes. when they do the static fires? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it's I mean, bolted. Um, yeah, I would imagine. Or or they fill it up so much that it physically couldn't lift it. That's the other option. Mm. You could also literally just have so much weight of fuel in there, you know, fill it to the top with fuel, and those three engines, even at full thrust, would not have enough weight to overcome. So when you they know? actually do the launch, would it not be full of fuel? No, it will not. Three Raptors would not be enough to lift the Starship. Um, but I'm assuming when it's launching with the super heavy, it would be totally full. They wouldn't launch it half empty, would they? Yep, yep. Because once, but the super heavy does have enough to get it up. Exactly, super heavy yeah, has okay. a butt ton of engines. Um, when <clears throat> it's the upper stage portion, and you know when it needs to be in the upper stage, the upper stage doesn't actually need to be greater than a one point, a one to one thrust to weight ratio. You have, can have your upper stage be a really low power stage. It could be like a half, you know, or a quarter or a tenth amount of gravity because it's already up there it's already lobbed up you have mm -hmm. plenty of time to kind of burn it's like the the centaur upper stage on the atlas 5 has an abysmal thrust to weight ratio it actually has to fly kind of crooked sometimes to like 
to actually mm-hmm. try to get itself crab enough. mode. That sounds um, like huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of got crab mode. Um, it doesn't matter as much on the upper stage, and of course, an upper stage will have at least six raptors because they'll be able to fire the the vacuum engines for the, when it's in the upper stage. Um, hmm. So yeah, yeah. so they can fully fuel it then. But for ground stuff, yeah, they won't be doing um, the full thing. Uh, With so three, is that all they need to do the twenty kilometer hop or whatever it is? Yeah, it's now looking like it's more like fifteen kilometers or so. Um, I'm going to keep just kind of letting some of this um, stuff play here from our friends at NASA Space Flight. Hopefully, they don't mind um, this just kind of running in the background here. Um, but yeah, uh, because they're getting ready to stack the nose cone while I talk about this, we'll just kind of show you. Um, the, oh, is this live? This no, this was the stuff yesterday. So on Wednesday, uh-huh, okay. they're getting that they got the nose cone out and the new blue Zilla there or the massive tank Zilla, I guess the massive new crane <laughs> um, out there to do the stacking of the nose cone. Uh, late last night, they fired the nose cones, um, cold gas thrusters, which was um, a first two. So they're really, I mean, they're just simply getting ready to launch this thing on a 15 kilometer hop. And it's really exciting. Like this is, these are some big milestones. This is, uh, I really wanted to sh- share this with you guys. This is um, our friend Austin Bernard. Um, he has this video here that is just too fun to look. He's just sitting on the side of the road, <laughs> just looking up, and there's just this, the nose going, just driving by, and it is so big. Uh, that's cool. It helps give you that perspective of just how big this stuff is. So correct me if I'm wrong, but all the all the dots that you see in lines on mm-hmm. the outside, is, is that because it has to be structurally... Um, supported on the inside because there's no, it's not pressurized right exactly yeah a hundred percent yeah that's exactly right the that's not oops. the heat shield thing it's not the transpirational cooling or the heat shield mounts um for this section you you can see all these weld marks um on the on the part of the payload bay and the nose cone that is uh that's yeah it needs extra extra structure to make sure that it can handle you know all the pressure and all the weight and all the loads and everything um, so yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, it's just st- stringers basically, or, or little stiffeners, ring stiffeners and strength and strengthener, rankeners, <laughs> strength arisers. Uh, but yeah, so that's exciting that is, it's actually happening. Uh, the other thing that Austin caught was this, check this out. Do you guys notice that something different about this particular nose cone? I'm worm sure logo. And <laughs> oh yeah, worm logo. It's the flag. There's a flag. And guys, oh, it's oh, white. oh there, there's no, there's no flappy flaps. <laughs> and it's white. Yeah, it's white. <gasps> oh, I thought that was just the image. <laughs> <laughs> they have painted a nose cone, uh, getting ready for some kind of mock-up or, you know, as now people are speculating, maybe this is what's going to be uh, for the next Starship presentation. Maybe it'll be showing what the lunar lander version of Starship will be. Uh, maybe it'll be a, you know, an actual crew mock-up with modules and stuff someday. But uh, first step is, I guess, paint it white because the lunar lander version will just be white. It, uh, it'll be painted for I don't exactly know what reasons, but it will be. And now we see it. <laughs> to be less yeah. reflective. Cool. Yeah. Um, there is one more question that we had from Discord, and that's why don't they just do a 100-kilometer hop? Um, it's kind of a why don't they just... Uh, the, would, the main reason, reason, what was that? Go ahead, Jeff. For the Carmen line thing or, yeah, or what? Yeah, that'd be the Carmen line, right? Yeah. Like, I guess, yeah, the, the reason first off is like, what, what would you gain besides saying that it crossed the Carmen line, which is completely arbitrary, especially at Don't this point Don't you have to have special permission to do that from the FAA and stuff? Like you can't just, I mean, you, I mean SpaceX get, clearly has authorization, but like this vehicle, wouldn't it have to be certified in some way? In order to do that, they get clearances for certain altitudes and stuff like that. So they just have to yeah. apply for a clearance and have it certified to be able to reach, yeah, that target. Um, but really, like, what would you gain from flying higher, really, than 15 kilometers? Because the biggest thing they're going to be testing, the step step one of testing this is just doing that belly flop maneuver. So that skydiving mm-hmm. part, which has never been tested before, and then the crazy belly flop at the very end of it, where it's going to switch from going, you know, belly flopping to all of a sudden you know toes down i still um, can't picture it i just can't it just that sounds insane 
Absolutely it, insane. It will be. It will be insane. So so they're kind of going with like, what's the minimum we can do to do that? You know, that's the this is the iterative phase SpaceX is in. What is the least amount of hardware, least amount of engines, you know, what's the least risky thing we can do in order to practice that? And that happens to be, you know, three raptors. Uh, gets you high enough up to be able to really get through some of those different, you know, atmospheric conditions and get you the data you need for that. If they're to try to get up to, say, 100 kilometers, they might have to risk five or six Raptors or whatever, you know? And yeah, it seems like, like that'd be a bigger mission that you'd want to test more things and do a... Like, it wouldn't just be a, hey, it doesn't work. It'd be a, let's get certified on these other 10 things or something, you know? It's... And we'll probably see, you know, more supersonic and hypersonic speeds on some of these upcoming missions and upcoming milestones. But for the very first one, just the 15 kilometers seems to be about the bare minimum. And yeah, it's going to be utterly bonkers. There's a good chance that, you know, next week when we're talking, I might be uh, heading down to Texas already. You know, I don't or I might be in Texas. I don't really know. Kind of paying attention to where serial number eight is at and how long it's going to take to stack and integrate and get ready for this flight. But you better believe it. I'm going to see that belly flop. I'm going to be there for it. Uh, (laughs) But where does it land? It doesn't land back on land, right? It will land on land. Oh, okay. I thought this one was doing out to a drone ship. Um, Nope. They're going to land it basically right where the star hopper and starship prototypes um you know, have been landing. And as the recording of this podcast again on Thursday, uh, they are working on stacking it right now, the nose cone onto the vehicle. <laughs> so this is happening. <laughs> this is I'm happening. just excited to see this is the first like full mock up that we've seen since Mark One, right? Yes. For over a year now. And this one's functional. This one's actually over functional. a year ago? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was last end of September last year. So this is you believe it's, it's been, been almost while. three years since the Roadster unveiling? Oh, that's crazy. It was Sad. November 2017. I don't know why they didn't just build it as is right away, you know? I don't know. Like, release it it's in It's just not a priority, which is lame. Yeah. I, I feel so bad for the people that put down a quarter million dollars. Literally yeah. handed over a wire transfer of a quarter million dollars, and it's just yeah. been sitting there waiting for nothing. No updates. I, I don't. And if you have that kind of money, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah there are some yeah, youtubers out there that have been waiting for these <laughs> <laughs> waiting to get their free ones <laughs> so, so that they can wreck it for the views Borat's <laughs> gonna Borat. drive he was supposed yeah. to drive his truck right. into it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they had to just use a model x instead yeah oh uh, but yeah so th- this is uh this is obviously really exciting stuff this is the one this will probably be uh other than dm2 Right, which was um, in May, was that when that was already? I've mm-hmm. lost track of all time, and it doesn't matter. Uh, this will be, I think, the other big event of the year for spaceflight, where it's like, you have to see this. And and the, yeah. whatever happens, whether it be smacking into the ground or nailing that maneuver or whatever, it's going to be something. And It's, it's going to be jaw-dropping either way. If it's, yes. if it's a failure, you're going to be, you're picking your job off the ground. If they nail it, you're still going to be like, what the hell did I just see? I that's It's I, exciting. I, I, what do you do? You think you'd lose your mind more if, if it's a spectacular failure and you see this big, you know, or, or do you, I? I almost think I would lose my mind more, honestly, if it does that thing at the very it. last if it, second. If it doesn't crash and guys, burn, <laughs> it's going to have to overcorrect because it's going to kick that, do that kick with the Raptors. We will have never seen anything like that before, ever. If if they na- so Wait, yeah, literally so, like nobody's no, ever done that before. It will be it'll make what the Falcon Nine how the Falcon Nine lands it'll look make that look like child's play. Yeah, <laughs> because Ben, I can see. So just a friendly reminder: huh. when it's belly flopping, it's, it's again horizontal to the ground. You know, it's yeah. it's perpendicular to the ground, the engines wise. And what it does, it's it, the, in order to do it this time because they don't have powerful enough gas thrusters to do that kick maneuver. They will light up the three Raptor engines at extreme, you know, at full pitch, so that it and just kicks, like push it. So yeah. it pushes it, but when it does that, it's going to make it go hor- translate horizontally an It'll, awful lot too. Yeah. yeah. So they have to over rotate, cancel out that horizontal <laughs> velocity, and then I've, straighten out and land. I've seen this <laughs> video game. It doesn't end well. I can just tell you. <laughs> this is Kerbal Space Program to the max. Y- yesterday, yeah. I was I went and played golf with my five year old, and his favorite part is driving the golf cart, of course. And <laughs> and I, I'm at the point now where I'm like letting him drive it entirely. 
Like he's controlling the steering wheel and the pedals. Not not super wise, but his <laughs> overcorrecting of the steering wheel is the thing that's the craziest. You're literally like, whoa, whoa, whoa. It sounds <laughs> like that. Like it's going to be yeah. like a, you mm-hmm. know, slosh bucket back and forth kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. Well, I imagine part of the, the flip maneuver is also, so they got the top flaps and the bottom flaps. They're going to fold back the bottom flap so yep. that it goes faster through the air exactly. and swings down a little more. So there's more resistance up top than Absolute. on the bottom. Yep. Exactly. So that'll but, help but a lot. You're say, but you're saying that's, that that alone is not enough. They're going to have to kick in the thrusters while it's still pretty horizontal. The main to make Raptor it. engines. Wow. The actual. Right. Yeah, yeah. So later on, uh, Elon said once they start using the hot. So currently, serial number eight has just cold gas thrusters. Basically, the same like cold gas thrusters that flip the Falcon 9 around, you know, the, the booster. They aren't very powerful. They aren't very efficient. They will eventually have way more powerful gas, hot gas thrusters that run on Methalox too. And those should be capable by the time you fold in those back fins and shoot the gas thrusters. They should be able to do that kick maneuver without touching the engines once they're vertical, light up the engines. So they're starting off with like a more advanced, difficult landing than they will be eventually. So if they can nail this and get this down, what they do after this will be easy. It'd be cool if they had a Falcon 9 coming down next to it at the same oh, that time. Would be cool. Just like <laughs> that uh, gosh. Yeah. Well that'll that'll be that'll be the drone shot. They'll just get the how, shot. From how the do you Falcon yeah, how do you film be... that? Oh, yeah. I can't wait. It I'm will pretty be, excited. Yeah, it's gonna be cool. The cr- we will have some we'll have some cameras there. I'll tell you that. We will have some cameras there. Now here's a funny question. <laughs> is uh Boca Chica is where this has happening? Uh, further away. Okay, is Tim's house closer to Joe's house than Joe's house <laughs> is to this? Like, how far away is this from Joe? And is he gonna go? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not planning on it, but I'm maybe you tempted. Should. I gotta be honest. Maybe I you mean, should. We'll have a place. Take Zoe hmm. with you. Dallas, Texas. Good I luck. I don't think my wife would let me do that. Directions. <laughs> I'm just gonna look up uh, South Padre Island from you. It's gonna be hours. It's that, oh. that's actually a good question, Ben. It's I, I, only, I don't know. Uh, like, is Tim's house closer to your way. house currently? Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm further to you than you are to Boca Chica. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's eight hours. Yeah. For you, eight eight twenty basically. Mm. It's not that bad. Nice, nice, easy day drive. <laughs> that's. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> we can talk about, about, about it more. Yeah, I guess. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this clip from our show. If that's just not enough for you and you want to watch the full episode, you can go to olfpod.com slash YT. And if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member. You'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks everyone for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks, everybody.